This is my my little cat mischief. Yes, we're out here in uh, in the back ah, in the green belt back here. Mischief's just hanging out. Okay, hi there. I thought I would film ah, outside today. It's really really gorgeous, and so I'm sitting here on the ground in. See if I can. Ah, or that's better. Okay. Hello. Yes, um, I have a bunch of weird ideas going on in my head and I just thought I'd try to vocalize some of them. Actually, there's a place over there that looks even more promising, so I'm going to move. See all the little wildflowers right here? <laughs> or whatever they are, weeds. <laughs> okay, now I'm, ooh. I gotta turn this, I gotta rearrange, because the, ah, there, there, now we have sunlight. This is better. I love having this green belt behind the condo. It's kind of like a little patch of woods. No, I was thinking today, I had to drive to work, and I was thinking on the way home, when I was a Christian in my very long time ago youth, we didn't, the idea of a, a young earth wasn't so prevalent. In fact, I had never heard of that idea until like maybe five years ago when I was more becoming more active on the uh, on YouTube never heard of a, a new a young earth theory and it never occurred to me that anybody could be that incredibly stupid to come up with that <laughs> when I was young the the pad answer well the answer that I was told as a questioning Christian about dinosaurs because I was always very fascinated with past life I was told, and you don't really hear this so much anymore because it's a really stupid, it's a really stupid explanation and I guess they figured that out finally. I was told that dinosaur bones were put in the ground by two different versions of this, put, put in the stones by Satan to throw us off track toward the truth and confuse us, or the other explanation is God put those bones in the dirt, in the in the rocks, to test us. See, I had to show. I have to show mischief here real quick. Not sure if if, ah, if this is showing her or not. That's mischief. She she was basically a stray that decided. Where did she go? There she is. She's a stray that decided to adopt my condo, and I just basically I couldn't find her home, so I finally just took her. Hi, kitty. She's great. Okay, back to it. Hi. Oh, too close. There, much better. Better, better, better. Okay. So yes, that's what that's that's what they used to say that the the dinosaur they really aren't bones anyway. They're just stones that are made to look like bones and God and or Satan put them there to confuse us. Nobody dreamed about coming up with the idea that the earth is only 5,000 years old. <laughs> Uh, we just assumed, well, at least it was assumed, that the Bible, the Bible's timeline started 5,000 whatever years ago. Then before the Bible's timeline was prehistory. And, you know, that's when the caveman lived. Except, of course, we didn't really believe in cavemen because we believed that God just took a bunch of dirt and formed man and woman. Actually, well, we don't want to get back into the Lilith story. He formed man. Well, we'll forget about Lilith, and then he formed woman to be man's little help, help whatever. Ah, uh, yes. Let's make women. Let's make it. Let's make it, this religion so that it's actually God's will for women to be subordinate and second class to men. Let's let's make it so that. It's God's will that man is in charge. 
And then, and then Christians wonder why people who are, anyway, the, I'm sorry, the whole belief system just screams sexism. And gee, do you think maybe it was, it, this religion was invented by a bunch of sexist men who wanted women to be silent and not bother them and basically do whatever they, they said? Now, if this Bible had been written by, okay, I'll tell you, if, if this God had said to a bunch of men that they were under women and that they were made to be the help meet of women and that they needed to be silent in church and if they had any questions, they needed to wait and, and until they were at home to ask their wives. If the Bible actually said all that, I might actually think that there was something to it, that maybe maybe this God wasn't created by man, that this God really existed. But because this God reflects everything, every desire, just happens to coincide with every every desire of your typical sexist man, we're talking about men from the Middle East, which unfortunately the attitude still is prevalent in the Middle East, but I imagine 2,000 years ago it was even more prevalent that women were just the next thing up from cattle. And I think even less than cattle in some places, but yeah. But instead the Bible reads exactly like you would expect it to read if it were invented by primitive sexist men who want to be head of the households, have absolute power, they don't want their their wives to try to put the pants on and, and be in charge, they don't want their wives to um, nag at them or interject opinions or have any thoughts of their own, you know. The Bible reflects exactly what a sexist society w would, would have it reflect. Men in charge, creating a religion, the first thing they're going to do is, is, I mean, it has the stamp of sexist, bigoted men all over it. If it was true, and if it was really from a, a deity, it would not just happen to coincide with every wish and desire that these men had. Oh, it, what a, what a, what a happy con, con, um, coincidence that the God of the universe, the creator of all the universes, just happens to want the same thing that men do. That's a coincidence. See, now if the Bible said, sorry guys, but you know, you were made second. Women, women were made to be in charge. Women were made to have the authority. Women were made to rule over you. If the Bible, now if these men were truly, truly reflecting or inspired by God, and God commanded that. Okay. Actually, yeah. These men are inspired by God. And God commanded that. That women should be in charge of men. Do you think that those men would have written that down? Shit. Did you hear what, what that... What, did you hear what he just said? We're supposed to write down that women are in charge. And that we're supposed to be silent. And, and, and ask, ask our wives when we get home. And... and you know, if, if, <laughs> let's just act, no, I don't think God, maybe God was like on drugs or something, because I'm sure he didn't really mean to say that. I'm sure that there's no way in hell that the men, that if God had in fact said that, the men would have written it down. I'm sorry, the Bible's created by men. The religion is created by men. And God said everything that the men wanted them, him to say. Because he's an imaginary character. They put words in his mouth. Well, our God would say that women are secondary. Our God would say that Jews are superior to all other race, uh, other whatever groups of people on the planet. Every other, every other group of people on the planet, they're just dogs, you know. And I just saw a thing Godless Glenn put up about Jesus calling um, a foreigner, a Gentile, a dog, and he did because the Torah refers to non-Jews as animals. We are animals, according to the Torah. And Jesus was a Jew, so he followed the Torah. 
So anyway, this is just me, mindless chatter. This is mindless chatter me. This is rambling, or no, somebody else said it really well. Um, ah, oh, I can't remember what she, what she called it. Blathering, I am blathering, but yeah, to me, and then Christians come along and they act like atheists are stupid because we, we don't believe in this book that is so obviously, con not only is the book so obviously put together by humans, but so is the God it, t it is writing, they're writing about. It's so obviously constructed by humans, so. <laughs> and then the other thing I wanted to say, and it's too short to put into a video all by itself, so I'm just gonna tack it onto this one. The whole, I'll pray for you thing that Christians say to atheists, there's one thing that's almost as bad as that. Oh, God still loves you. Oh, really? Oh, that's gonna change everything. That's, oh, I'm, I, really, God loves me? Okay, well, I guess I should just love God back. It all comes back, for me, it all comes back to the nature of God, as is described by these tribe. I mean, he's a tribal God written by the Jewish, by a tribe, and, and he's described as a monster. He commits genocide. He orders genocide. He commits infanticide. Is that how it's pronounced? He kills babies and, and pregnant women, and he orders the killing of babies and pregnant women. He commands, like, two, is it 3,200 or 32,000? I, I think it's 3,200, but I don't know for sure. Women who have just watched their families get slaughtered by the Israelites, he commands that they're taken and made sex slaves to the soldiers of Israel. Isn't that special? Women are nothing to God. Women are second. Women are, women are whatever the men thought of women back then, that's what God thought of women too. Isn't that a coincidence? How can Christians not see all these coincidences. It's like, oh, <laughs> and women have less worth than men as slaves. Women's slaves are worth half as much as male slaves. <laughs> Slavery's okay with this God in the Bible. Gee, do you think it was okay with the men back then who wrote the Bible? Think so? So, just, just me blathering. <laughs> such a gorgeous day I wanted to make some kind of video and just sit out here and I love it it's almost you know I feel like I'm out in the woods even though my I could throw a stone and hit the side of my condo <laughs> so I don't know this this doesn't really have a message this video this is just a me throwing things thoughts out that have been in my head today that I wanted to say so if you've been listening, I hope you're having the kind of sunshine that we're having right now. It's great. <laughs> oh, I have a broken windshield on my smart car, too. That's another thing. It's like a foot long. I have a crack on my windshield that's a foot long. Yesterday, there was nothing. There wasn't even the sun. I didn't even know there was a, a ding on my windshield. Today, there's a crack a foot long, so... Wow, shit happens. <laughs> but luckily I will have uh, a new windshield being put on my car on Saturday. So I'm petting my cat here while I'm talking. <laughs> so that's the only news. That and, one, and the fact that my, my littler Iguana Gizmo escaped her cage three days ago and I have not been able to find her. She's about a foot long. I have a foot long lizard crawling around in my house and I don't know where she is. And it makes me really sad because without a heat source and without food and water, she's not going to live very long if she's even still alive. So I have pretty bum bummed out about that too. And I'm just noticing the lighting right now. Wow, dappled sunshine on my face. That's so poetic. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching if you have. Bye.